Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about communication apprehension. Communication apprehension, as has been defined by James McCroskey, is the fear or anxiety associated with either real or anticipated communication with another person or persons. So again, communication anxiety, it's the fear or anxiety associated with either real or anticipated communication with another person or persons. This is something that we all experience in one way or another in some part of the communication process. There's a fun Jerry Seinfeld bit that I like to include, and I'm going to show you that right now. I saw a thing, actually, a study that said speaking in front of a crowd is considered the number one fear of the average person. I found that amazing. Number two was death. <laughs> death is number two? This means to the average person, if you have to be at a funeral, you would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, so the number one fear is public speaking. However, the number one or one of the top three skills people are looking for when you're going for employment, communication skills. They want you to be able to speak. Yes. And in our class, we also want you to be able to speak. In order to talk about communication apprehension, I want to go back to our model here. Communication Let's see, it's the transactional communication model. And you can see part of the screen. There we go. There we go. So it's the transactional communication model. And why I like to bring this up is because when we think of our anxiety, it really does help if we can pinpoint where it comes from. Communication is not just some big blob that might make us nervous. As we can see in this particular model, there are many aspects that go into communication. So let's take a look. Why don't we talk about sender and receiver? Sometimes the receiver might be what is making you nervous. Have you ever spoken to your boss at work? Or maybe... Let's say your teacher calls you up to their desk and they say, Hey, so-and-so, will you come over here and talk to me after class? And then the class goes, Ooh, and the teacher goes, No, no, no. Do you feel a little anxious before you go up to talk to your teacher? You don't know what's happening. You don't know why. It also can involve the channel. Imagine this. Imagine this. You are having to tell, let's say, your best friend some horrible news. And you know your best friend is going to be mad. Do you feel better saying it face to face? Or do you feel less nervous if you could just send it over a text message? The channel might be what's making you feel anxious or nervous. And why not take a look at the feedback and the message? What if you were telling your friend something wonderful? It's great news and you're so excited. Do you feel a little bit less anxious than if you had to tell your friend something horrible? Possibly. That's why I like to bring up the transactional communication model. I want you to start thinking about what is it that's making me feel nervous? In our class, it very well could be the context. Perhaps if you were giving your speech to your family or your best friends, you'd feel a little bit less anxious than if you were going to perform in front of a class. Or for the purpose of this specific quarter, maybe you'd feel less nervous performing in front of a camera than you would in front of a live audience. It's possible. But it's very good to start thinking about this. What is it that makes you anxious? And we're also going to talk about how 
to help yourself move past your anxiety. Doesn't mean it will go away completely. I still feel anxiety myself when I'm speaking, even though I do this as a job, and I do this as a job now. So it doesn't go away, but we can help ourselves minimize as best we can the feelings of communication anxiety. What I'd like us to do now is a guided meditation that I came up with for the purpose of this class. If you want to close your eyes, feel free. I personally don't like closing my eyes, and so I'm not going to ask you to, or I won't force you to, but if you want to, feel free. All right, take a nice deep breath. Try to clear your mind of other thoughts so that we can relax. Okay, what I want you to do is imagine you are at a theme park and you are next in line for the biggest roller coaster there is at this place, possibly the biggest roller coaster you've ever seen. You're next in line. You see the train come down the track and it arrives at the station. The lap bar and the other bar, they both come up. And the people in front of you exit the roller coaster. And now your bar is open so that you can take your seats. You walk in first. And you, you have to walk around that weird little divider thing in the middle of the seats. So you're kind of tiptoeing over there. You notice the person in front of you left their, their hat. So you say, hey, hey, you left your hat. And they grab it, and they're really thankful because that's their favorite hat. They actually got it from one of their friends before they, you know, they moved to Milwaukee. They live in Milwaukee. Why not? Why not? Okay, so... So, now you sit down, and you pull the chest bar over, and the ride attendant checks it, all clear, and now your ride begins to move. It's fun, it's a little slow, but you come up to the first big hill, and you look to the top. Ooh, and you see the car in front of you. They all go flying down the hill. Ah, in a good way. They're on the track still. And now it's your turn to go up. Clack, 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 clack. You've just run over a duck on your way up the hill. Clack, 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 and now you're at the top. You're looking over, and you're about to go on the largest drop you've ever seen. All right, come back to me, class. Come back to me. What were you feeling? This is where I, you know, take notes at a whiteboard, but we aren't today. So what we'll do is go back to Microsoft Word. Tell me, class, what were you feeling when you were up there on the roller coaster, were you feeling nervous? Perhaps excited? Oops. Perhaps you were happy? You might have been scared? Which was it? Could have been a combination. What I want to tell you now, class, is that those are all psychological. We can spell, there we go. Psychological is what's happening in your mind. Let us now ask what was happening to your body. This is different. What was happening physiologically? Oh, this will be fun. Physiological. What was happening physiologically, class? Perhaps your heart rate increased. 
let's say perhaps your pupils dilated that's possible pupils dilate means they get bigger what about perhaps your hands start to sweat your hands might sweat what about your breathing increases here's the thing class physiologically it's very possible all of those things are going to happen if you're feeling excited or if you're feeling happy or if you're feeling scared or if you're feeling nervous physiologically the same things are probably going to happen here's the beautiful thing psychologically how you interpret what is happening to your body you get to choose what do you feel what do you feel when these happen do you choose to be excited do you choose to be happy and excited that you're getting to share your research something you're passionate about with your classmates maybe you do feel scared but are you so scared that you that you give up hopefully not you're nervous but you might be excited too you get to choose tell your brain what you're feeling here's what I want us to do now I want us to think about what's making us nervous about public speaking what makes you nervous with your life I want you to hold it in your hands and now I want you to smash it and start to transform it into a duck and then run it over with your roller coaster class eh? yeah the roller coaster bit came back there was a reason for that duck because in this university and in the entire CSU you have to take this class you have to do it you can't graduate unless you take public excuse me oral communication you have to take the class you have to be here so run that duck over and let's have some fun I'm hoping that when you feel nervous to speak in front of other people you can think hey I'm not just nervous I'm also excited I'm also happy I get to do this I'm gonna do great and you will I'm sure you will do wonderfully here's what I want to think about now what can we do when we start to feel nervous what is it that we do some previous classes have said they listen to music excellent why not turn on some music help yourself calm down how about this one practice oh my goodness I'll write it twice please practice <laughs> practice practice won't make perfect here but it's going to help you get better and better with that being said I'll put this don't expect perfection I know a lot of us think we have to perfect the speech but that just adds nervousness that adds pressure instead your speech will get better and better but if you're performing it and some things change or maybe you forget a line we don't know I don't know I don't have your speech <laughs> your audience doesn't have your speech we'll believe you don't expect perfection but do practice the other thing that we need to know this comes from the book visualize success it does help it, it does know that you're going to be fine know that you're going to do well picture yourself done with your speech turning off your camera or posting it and being done you did a great job woohoo yeah yeah, so uh, this is a fun way to teach all right visualize success what else can we do I want you to think about your own your own ways to minimize anxiety what do you do so take take some time and, and think about that but I'll also type in the audience doesn't always see your nerves when you're up there and you might be shaking you might maybe your hands are going you might think oh everyone can tell that we're nervous we can't it's in your head only you 
Another thing is breathe. Drink some water. These are good. These are good tips. Some of them come from the book. Some of them come from my experience or from the experience of a few uh, past students. So take some time to think about what helps you. What will help you feel less nervous in any situation? This is strange. I'm staring into the webcam, and it looks like an owl eye. It looks like an owl, but I can only see one eye. Is, is staring at me. I hope it's friendly. I assume it is. Okay. But I digress. Go ahead and try these out, class, and try out the methods that you think will help you. These don't have to be just for public speaking. They can be for any type of, any type of situation. But part of this class is helping you to reduce your anxiety and I'm hoping these will work. Thank you.